Welcome to the Swedish Maker. This week, me and my wife made this hammock. We started by cutting all the pieces for the base to length. The base is made from 2x4s apart from the two pieces in the bottom that we used to keep the legs together as seen in the drawing. We used a digital protractor to get all the angles from the drawings onto the material. We also placed the material on the ground just to see that the angles looked correct. Still not trusting the computer drawings totally. Once all the pieces for the base were cut to length, we started by cutting the half lap joints on the leg parts. These are not going to be glued because we want to be able to take it down during winter, so we are going to use wing nuts on most of the joints. I started cutting the half lap joints with a Japanese saw and a chisel, but I slowly realized that would take too much time, even though it feels good working with hand tools. For the rest of the cuts I used a table saw and a miter gauge. I drew the hammock in Fusion 360 in two parts, one part for the base and one part for the seat. And I have to say, I haven't been doing woodworking for a long time, but since I started using Fusion, everything changed. I used to do so many mistakes since I just had a rough sketch to build from, and now when I'm using Fusion, I'm handling most of those issues directly in Fusion before the build has even started. I did go through a course made by Brandon who runs the channel Make or Break Shop and his course covers all aspects of fusion connected to woodworking and it is really easy to understand. Going through that course has also given me a lot of self-confidence in my woodworking. I'll have a link in the description to his YouTube channel as well as a link to the course where you can go check that out. Now back to the build. We continued by cutting all the pieces for the seat with a miter saw. I rounded off the corners for the seat with a bandsaw and then I taped them together and sanded them for a nice finish. This is just a detail, but it's all in the details. Here all the pieces are cut to length. We drilled all the holes for the bolts in the base and did a dry fit just to see that everything was okay.
we use these barrel nuts just to get a sturdy construction. We also did half lap joints on the base of the seat and when that was done my wife painted them first using an oil to make the wood resist weather and then with a white color. Now we did intentionally save the armrests for last because we had to think about how we would attach the seat to the base. We finally had the idea to attach the rope to a long bolt running through the seat and the armrest and adding two big washers that the rope can rest against. We made two similar pieces of armrest out of some scrap wood we had lying around and we just drew freehand and did the cutting on the bandsaw with the pieces taped together to make them kind of similar. We then used the belt sander to make them look handmade of some sort. Once the paint had dried we assembled everything that was done at this point just to be able to see how we should attach the armrest. We used the armrest to position the seating. We made supports for the armrest out of the same material as the armrest and attached the support and the armrest together with wooden dowels. Since it was hard to clamp them together I used the vise to hold on to the support and then I clamped the armrest to the vise. That way I could clamp them together with enough force.
I drilled holes through the top of the base to be able to attach the hooks. My wife spliced the ropes to create loops where the rope would hang. I have no idea how this is done, but it makes a really strong loop, or so I'm told. Then we could just assemble everything and the uh, project was done. That's it for this week. We are so proud of uh, this porch swing hammock thing. And I really hope you liked it as well. Please subscribe if you haven't and hit the thumbs up if you liked it. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.